All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushai, Ba'ashem Rachel Kodash, the Bo'an, and speaking to the Apostles and others at Great Millstone, who were well, and so this is 100% truth. Much peace and blessings be unto you, who for you like that the Bishnat is worth of thought, truth, and sincerity. To all you, I can say Shalom. On the Akira, I'm from the servants of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai Kim, coming in with a quick video. Going into uh, 2 Samuel, the 7th chapter, and so like I'm going to say a quick hit, rather a quick hit. So, starting off at verse 12 in 2 Samuel, the 7th chapter, it reads, And when thy days be fulfilled, and this is the Heavenly Father speaking unto, you know, our forefather King David, and it says, And thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee. All right, seed being offspring, all right, a, a child. We shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Now the heavenly father, Yahweh, was speaking to King David on the behalf of King Solomon to come. All right, because what basically happened was that King David desired to build a house for the Ark of the Covenant. Hey, because he was dwelling in, 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 in an actual building, whereas the... The ark was dwelling in the tent. Or yeah, that one account where it stayed within the tents of Obed-Edom, which the Heavenly Father, you know, beautifully blessed Obed-Edom. You know, since he let the ark stay within, the t within this tent, within this home. But the Heavenly Father wouldn't allow King David to build the temple. All right, so what happened? Because he, had, he, had, he, had, he was a man of war. He had blood on his hands. He had the account where, um, where uh, he collected the foreskins. For for um for Saul, so he could receive uh, the, his you know so he could, so he could you know so he could marry King Saul's daughter. But going on says he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. His kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before thee. And thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speaking to David. Which, you know, the point I wanted to get at was in verse 14 where it reads, I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Which King Solomon did just that. Or yeah, that one account. Where he ended up, you know, basically, after a certain extent, you know, he ended up uh, worshiping idols. And that's why, you know, they were there, you know, the Arthur Fathers will, will command, you know, Jay to uh, not even deal with the heathen women because, you know, idol worship was so heavy back in the day uh, with these different gods that you'd bug yourself out and start, you know, believing what they believe in. Why? Because, uh, you know, like in that, in the letter, and if I'm mistaken, first or second Ezra, so you have the, the letters to the king, or yeah, that one Jake say that woman it, that that woman is the most powerful, and because Jake will do anything for her, you know, it's like a man will do anything for her. So you had King Solomon, you know, he was idol worshiping, and then you know he, there was no account of him being chastised with the rod of men, not with the stripes of the children of men. All right, because. The, the day he died was the day his kingdom fell down. All right, so nothing really happened back then. You know, he was preserved from, from, from you know, basically being chastised with the rod of men. But this one is going to, I'm going to get that on that book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter, verse <clears throat> 11. It says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. And this is the Heavenly Father speaking. It shall not return unto me void, meaning nothing. That word void meaning empty, nothing. But it shall accomplish that which I please. So whatever the Lord said, you know, it will be fulfilled. Basically, his his words are basically commands that come to fruition. So it said, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. So when the Lord said that he, that, that he will be chastised that's what the rod of men, he was referring to the reincarnation when, 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 when he would come back as himself. You know, Yahweh Shai. All right, which, first of all, you, know, you read Matthew 1 and 1, which reads the book of the generation of Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And because he can receive it through the Spirit, he was really the reincarnation of Isaac and, and, and uh, um, Solomon. 
All right, there was a lot of similarities, you know, with the son of Abraham. He, he was Isaac because what, what did the Lord command Abraham to do with Isaac? You know, to sacrifice him. And what did Yahweh Shai become? That great sacrifice. And he was King Solomon because, you know, um, King Solomon was known as the wisest king. You know, after the kings before him and the kings that come after him. And Yahweh Shai was also, is also that wise man. He received total understanding. And that's in Isaiah, the slack at Revelation, if I'm not mistaken, the fifth chapter, where it says he has this, the, the seven horns and the seven eyes. The seven eyes. That represents completion. But also in Isaiah, the 11th chapter, starting off at verse 1, it reads, And there shall come forth the rod out of the, out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, that being Solomon. But this is really talking about Yahweh Shai. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel, and might the spirit... Slacking, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and it shall make him of quick understanding and the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his eyes. But with the righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity, equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked, and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. So it sounds like a lot like King Solomon, but this is really talking about Yahweh Shai. I want to show you that similarity between the two. You know, so it's really the same person. But, you know, to bring out the point of how he got chastised, you know, as he always shot himself, this is the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. And, you know, this is basically, you know, a future prophecy before the time of Yahweh Shai. And because Isaiah prophesied about this, but in, starting from verse 3, it says, He is despised. And rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid it. It's like and we had it, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. And you know, going throughout the Gospels, all right, uh, Matthew, you know, Luke, um, Mark, John. You read about how Yahweh was hated and despised. All right, they kicked them out of the cities. Yeah, that one account when when he when he healed the, the, the that that Jake that was you know played with the with the legion of demons and then put the the, the demons into um the flock of pigs and have them you know fall off the cliff. You had the locals and they got pissed off and said get the hell out of here. So he was despised. But going on verse four it says surely hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Yahweh and afflicted. He had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. His whole his whole mission was, you know, to heal the sick, preach the gospel, you know, build up the, the apostles so they could receive this, the, 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 the Holy Spirit. And, you know, die that great sacrifice for the nation of Israel as a sheep without blemish. So he had a, he had a very, very tough job. And it goes on to say, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And so Yahweh shy. He got chastised with the rod of men and beat with stripes. And literally, he got beat with stripes, man. All right, if I can get it out in the book of Matthew or one of those books. Or with me, I can. And look what this is actually recording. And I'm not just, you know, speaking on this subject without the video recording because these, you know, this past week, my lessons have been recording and it's tough to, you know, live stream on streaming without your sword. But going on, this is the book of Matthew. Uh, Slovakia. If I can get the quick precept out. Verse 27 It said Then the soldiers of the governor took Yahweh Shine to the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, Roman soldiers, and they stripped him and put him on a scarlet robe because that, that, the scarlet robe or a purple robe, you know, which um, scarlet is, if I'm not mistaken, red. And it was really talking about a purple robe. Yeah, it was really talking about a purple robe, if I'm not mistaken, because a purple robe represents royalty. And when they had plated a crown of thorns, 
they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him, and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the rope out from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to be crucified him. And they see, so they spit on him, took he took the reed in, and smote him on the on the head. Or right, even when he when he when he when he got taken and he was in the in the the, the building of the high priest Caiaphas, if I'm mistaken, that's his name. You have one Jake say, Prophesy who smote you while he was blindfolded. So they 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 really took a beating to Yahweh Shai. It goes in the say. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, which if I'm mistaken, Simon means a, Simon means a helper. So as really the Spirit of the Lord put a man named Simon to help Yahweh Shai carry the cross. And they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were coming to a place called Golgotha, Golgotha, this is that is a place say that is a say a place of, of a school. Because that 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 area looked like a school. They even vinegar to drink mingled with cow, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him, and part of his garment is casting on to the member you feel which is spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and sit over his head, his accusation written. This is Yahweh Shai, the king of the Jews. You can read on. But that was basically the fulfillment of the second Samuel, the seventh chapter, verse 14. Because when King Solomon came back as himself, as Yahweh Shai, that was when the Lord, you know, would chastise him with the rod of men. So, that, you know, just a quick hit going into that, you know, going to the point. And hopefully this lesson was edifying to the next one. That's Aisha Luan.